Welcome to another Propophology video. So rocuronium is really common within anaesthetics. It's a muscle relaxant. It allows us to intubate the patient while they are paralysed. It's an amino steroid. It's a non-depolarising muscle relaxant. How it works is via competitive inhibition of acetylcholine at the nicotinic receptors at the neuromuscular junction. What happens is the molecule of rocuronium binds to the alpha subunit of the receptor but it won't stimulate it to open the ion channel, that's why it's non-depolarizing in comparison to succinamethonium, which causes it to stay permanently open, at least until its effects wear off. Rocuronium must occupy at least 70% of the receptor sites at the neuromuscular junction for any clinical effect to be seen. Rocuronium is presented as a clear, colorless solution at 10 mg per mil. It's stored at 4 degrees Celsius, so it's usually kept in the fridge. The particular dose needed of rocuronium depends on how you're using it. So 0.6 mg per kilogram of rocuronium allows intubation in roughly 90 to 120 seconds, although this can be much longer or slightly shorter. A dose of 0.9 to 1.2 mg per kilogram will allow you to achieve intubating conditions in 60 seconds with a duration of 45 minutes. So the effects of rocuronium will last for 45 minutes and you'll be able to intubate the person within 60 seconds. There's quite a lot of debate at the moment regarding the onset time of rocuronium and some practitioners in HEMS, which is the Helicopter Emergency Medical Service, will use doses of up to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram. This is with the aim of achieving the best possible intubating conditions in the shortest amount of time possible. In terms of the absorption and distribution of rocuronium, protein binding is about 10% and the volume of distribution is low at 0.2 litres per kilogram. Aminosteroidal drugs are bulky and they're polar and therefore they do not easily cross cell membranes and their volume of distribution is therefore low. They contain certain bits of their, of their chemical composition that resemble acetylcholine and that interacts with the acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction and that is essentially how they exert their effect. If we compare rocuronium to vecuronium, it's seven times less potent than vecuronium so a higher dose needs to be given to achieve muscle relaxation. The higher number of molecules given in this increased dose causes an increased concentration gradient between the blood and the neuromuscular junction and that means there's a faster onset of action in rocuronium compared to vecuronium by the law of mass effect. Simply put, there are more molecules to form a concentration gradient to move across to work at the receptor. On to metabolism and excretion, it's only 5% metabolized by the liver, it's 60% excreted in bile and 40% excreted in urine. So therefore, if you've got liver or renal failure, the duration of action of rocuronium can be increased. In terms of systemic effects, it really doesn't have very many, but at high doses it can exert a vagolytic effect on the heart, which causes a tachycardia. You should be aware that neuromuscular blockers are a leading cause of anaphylaxis perioperatively and of course, surrounding any intubation. Thankfully, we're able to reverse the effects of neuromuscular blockade whenever you use rocuronium or vecuronium. Traditionally, we always use neostigmine, which is an anticholinesterase, that increases the concentration of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, therefore enabling it to work again as it normally did before the administration of the amino steroid. We now have Sugamidex. Sugamidex is a modified gamma cyclodextrin. It's actually of the same sort of family as a Febreze, which claims to have odour eating technology in, inside it. Um, nevertheless, Sugamidex engulfs rocuronium or vacuronium, rendering it unable to work at the neuromuscular junction. can therefore be excreted safely as an engulfed compound. There are various doses used to reverse the effects of rocuronium, usually between 4 and 16 milligrams per kilogram. But this is changing quite frequently at the moment, so I'm going to refer you to the website to have a look at our specific page uh, on Sugamidex. If you give it three minutes post-intubating dose, however, it will reverse rocuronium within 1.5 minutes. It goes without saying, the higher the dose of rocuronium you've used and could still be active within the body, the higher the dose Sugamidex you'll need to use. You can find more material on rocuronium and all of the neuromuscular blocking agents we use in anaesthesia and critical care on the website www.propophology.com.